we have the engine inside the T2 chassis. Stays on his own engine mounts. Just finish them. They're still nice and hot. Very simple. It's a nice access there. And uh, let me show you. These are the CV joints. You see the angle? It's fuck all. It is pretty much like original cars, maybe even less. I've seen more original cars with more angle. So I'm really, really happy with this. And uh, there you go. Obviously, we're gonna have to make. Um, I want to make like a, um, like a plate in the near of the uh, differential gearbox and the, and the sump here, you know. So that's why I got this flat in the middle there, because I want to run some uh, obviously mounts mounts on the front and protect it just in case. I mean, it is pretty tall, but you know, just in case you never know. So and it's nice and straight. Happy with this. Now on this side here, let me grab the light. Look how much space we have. Loads. Like I said, I removed those. Um, I have just removed. Ah, oh, Jesus, this bloody light. No, it won't stay. Let me just leave it this way. So I removed the alternator, the pulley tensioner, tensioner and the power steering pump because obviously I'm not using the power steering pump on this one. So I'm gonna use the Bora 1.9. Bracket, which is completely different. Uh, I'm gonna chop all the bottom of it because we're not gonna need it. We're gonna only leave the section that holds the alternator on the top, uh, including the tensioner, which is on the top here. The standard one was from the bottom, and we're not using that, which is, there you go, that's the one. Not only using it. This way, we can, as I say, we can only run one belt. Uh, well, um, belt for just one thing, which is going to be alternator, is going to go up there, come back around the tensioner on this side, and come back to the crank pulley. Very clean, very nice. Not much stuff. We remove some more space. Obviously, we move the engine forward a little bit. Uh, well, pretty much four inches, which gives us even better weight distribution. No, that doesn't matter, because obviously in this kind of vehicle, it doesn't really matter, but you know, this bloody motorsport stuff, you know, you, you can you can rid, get rid of that kind of mentality. Um, every time I try, I can put the engine towards more of the center of the car. I'm happy. Will he feel any difference or not? Probably not, but in my head, it's a good job. I like it. So um, another thing on this side. Obviously, that's not going to be the turbo. The turbo is going to be bigger. Let's say we're going to build a nice exhaust manifold. And I think, just as a comparison, I'm going to grab this turbo here, which is actually the standard turbo from my S14 OM606. Slightly different there. <laughs> so this one, well, we're going to use a BMI turbo, but slightly, I think they do really similar size. Uh, it's gonna be somewhere here. So the turbo outlet is gonna face this way. You see, let me just put it down because it's one hand is not easy And like I say boost pipes this way around the alternator and I think I'm gonna put a, uh, a Charge cooler over there and because we have such so much space here um, I can still run the, the the radiator we had or even thicker one or a small additional one here There's plenty of space now and maybe behind it No, just behind it um, We could run the Radiator for the charge cooler because the initial idea was to run it in the nif of the car Because it's nice and tall. It's a lot of space. We can protect it uh, But maybe we can just leave it here Another thing is that we could actually run a normal intercooler because we actually have space here between the engine and the radiator, like I said. But I don't think it's a great, great spot for it because it will have to do a great job. Um, and uh, it's inside the engine bay um, and there is a radiator, obviously, on this side, which is going to go nice and hot. I don't think it's a great idea. So charge cooler, I think, is still the plan. Um, I think they it will be more efficient in this case in this build. Um, so yeah, now let's hope uh, we're actually going to do this whole turbo system and go towards between 240 and 300 something brakes. It all depends how we're going to do it, how many parts we're going to use, 
Um, I'm still waiting for Nick to make a final decision. I'm a hope he's not gonna chicken out because I really want to do it. And uh, this will be nuts, you know. 300 brakes and I don't know, 550, 600 meters of torque in something like this. <laughs> it's gonna pull with it. So, so far so good. Uh, everything is nice. Um, the only thing complicated, it's not complicated really, is the fuel tank that we have to modify. Uh, because for now there's none. I didn't put it back, you see, so empty there. Ah, oh, my light is dying, you see. There's nothing there, it's just a bit of chassis cut off. Um, I got the engine mounts and uh, I still have to build that cross member there to reinforce obviously the chassis uh, because I removed the original cross member. And then I have to build um, another mount on the gearbox. Let me show you. This is how it looks like from underneath. Very simple. Let's say I use this. Obviously, if I had to do it from scratch, I would build them slightly different, smaller, because obviously we don't need all of this section. I might actually chop it off later and just put the plate underneath there, just to make it look better, because obviously it looks very strange, this sticking out unnecessarily. Um, now, as for the gearbox mounts, um, we're gonna use, you see this one, let me just hold this fucker this way. There you go. These two, one, two, three, and four. Uh, because obviously this bracket is not gonna be used, unless Nick is gonna want to, um, maybe feed one of, you know, one of these shifters that is close to the steering wheel uh, through cables, but that's gonna be long, long cables. I think we're just gonna run um, standard shifter, standard T2 shifter with the mechanical. Uh, set up. So yeah, these four bolts and uh, they're gonna go up bush here and as you know We chopped this off. This was going all the way through now. We got a space for the gear for the engine So I'm gonna run a cross member from there all across And it's gonna go across there There and in this section here on this side again. We got two bolts here and two threads there on the gearbox. Also, I was thinking maybe, because you're gonna run so, so much power, could utilize those mounts there. We got one, two, three, and four holes thread it. I can make a bracket going down from here, put a bush here, use these two holes, maybe put another bracket here, some attachment, and just use a bush here to stop this gearbox going up and down because obviously when you accelerate, this goes uh, up, I think, up, and then decrease the speed, goes down. So, may do it, because obviously these are very soft. The gearbox mounts are very soft. So there's, there's going to be still plenty of movement, you know. And uh, this bush here may actually give it a big of a hand to stop it from doing that. This is the angle of the drive shaft, you see not exceeding the five degree, like I said, so very happy with this. Um, yeah, in overall, very good. Look how much space I got. Now, hopefully, hopefully, Nick is gonna make a right decision. This is the only right decision you have to make. This light off, come on. Because you really need about 300 brakes or something like this. I mean, come on, <laughs> that's gonna be stupid. But it puts a smile on your face, right? So why not? He gets me excited. Now we're still waiting for the clutch and the flywheel, but again, the choice of the flywheel is gonna go solid mass. Uh, we know this already. The clutch spec, we still don't know because obviously it all depends how much power and torque we have to hold there. And we're still in uh, kind of making decisions. I think Nick liked the idea of having so much power under his foot, obviously, when he's available, when he wants it. But, obviously it's extra costs. And, uh, and again, this is absolutely no need. I mean, as it is now, this engine set up, it makes plenty of power. You really don't need any more. It is just to make you happy, just to put a smile on your face. But it is quite costly because we, obviously you need a lot of stuff. You need the injector nozzles. Uh, injectors, they have to be conditioned. Um, at the moment of fitting the nozzles as well, because it would be stupid not to. Obviously all new gaskets and all that stuff. Uh, exhaust manifold we have to build again it's not mega expensive it's only four cylinder engine so i make them 
what about between I don't know seven and hundred quid maybe there's no external wastegate needed because it's a uh, variable geometry turbo we're gonna control it exactly the same as the original turbo on the Volkswagen um, what else uh, yeah the inlet plenum he wants the equal flow plenum which is very good because the standard ones I hate them uh, I think they completely rubbish for flow uh, the charge cooler itself is not expensive, but obviously you have to put the radiator, you have to put the lines. Again, lines are very cheap, but uh, you need a pump. Which pump are you going to use? You're going to use a 50 quid pump or 150 quid pump. You know the good one. Reliability, more expensive one. And uh, so I know all this stuff. And you add up a lot, lot of small things and you get a pretty big figure. Although in this case, I don't really think it's that big for such big power. Uh, but again, this is personal. Um, all I can say, I'm just hoping he's going to make the right decision and go for it. <laughs> I would like to see it. So, yeah, now I'm going home because it is Saturday. I think it's midday or lunchtime. I don't know. I have to go home because tomorrow is lorry driving time again. So, and uh, we have to see each other next week. On uh, I'm back on Wednesday next week. And the Wednesday we're gonna make the gearbox mount, and uh, hope Nick will make a decision by that time. We can actually gather all the bits and go forward with the bit because I really want to finish it as soon as possible. Like every day working just on this. Uh, I haven't even touched my van. You see it? It's under on there. There you go. I finished it. Well, nearly. Uh, it is good to go for testing, and obviously to get it out, I have to get this one out which, you know, this thing will not go under that thing. So I will have to push this out of the workshop and then push it back. Uh, I don't want to do it for me, it's wasting time because now time is really, really tight on me because I know I'm doing two jobs, slowly driving and working in a workshop. So pretty much every day. Uh, as I say, I lost a bit of interest in testing my van, but the more I look at it, the more I want to, but I have to put the brakes on my horses and finish this. And I make myself a promise, I'm gonna test this one only when this one here is actually moving on its own power. So, but the beautiful thing is that this gearbox, this gearbox fits the CV joints from the uh, pool, Volkswagen Passat 1.9 TDI, 130 brakes. CV joints, shaft, and the CV joint on this side. So, I think so, unless Nick does some hybrids, but I think these are the standard um, drive shafts from the Passat, and they fit. The ball pattern is exactly the same, so that's really good, that's happy days. It means we don't have to make any custom drive shafts. Uh, big money saving, which you can spend on a turbo. Hmm? That's a good point. <laughs> All right, I'll see you all next week, probably, on Wednesday. There you go, beautiful.